Hi everyone. Welcome back to Human Loathing. My name is Alfred. Um, so it turns out you can, as far as I can tell, you can only get a shovel by grinding it and getting it from a enemy in this zone. I'm reading about something else here. Don't mind me. Um, but also while I was here, I discovered this unique encounter that only shows up once. And so if I didn't record it, I would be rather remiss. You turn down a cemetery path you haven't tried yet, and at the end of it you find a small stone tomb with two crossed clubs engraved over the door. This must be the place. You mark the location on your map in case you ever need to find it again. The iron gate swings open easy, without even a creak, and the stone door behind it slides open on well-oiled hinges. Looks like a guild makes take pretty good care of the place, but it seems a little strange it's so easy to get in. Though your class leader said something about tests, so maybe sending people out here is a regular initiation thing. If so, it sure beats having to swim across a lake with a candle in your butt, at least so far. The tomb's pretty small inside, with just enough space for a stone coffer and room to walk around it. The coffer is engraved with scenes of ancient seal clubbers beating the hell out of ancient and monstrous-looking seals. And other enemies as well, but mainly seals. There doesn't seem to be a knave engraved anywhere on the coffer, although if it was, I guess it'd be the tomb of the known seal clubber. But you do find a bronze plaque at the far end that has some writing on it. It appears to be some kind of weird riddle. The howling deafens, hobbin, hobbled hamstrung, eyes blinded by claw, the blood is frozen. Our ancient enemy, for always and ever, fighting for freedom from this, fro from this foe. Hmm, what change to that? Facing Northern's other, boredom or seals? Uh, I'm going to say seals. Say what seems like a pretty reasonable answer, but nothing happens. So you say it again louder. Nope. Grumbling, you poke around a little more. Finding nothing, and eventually try to come back and try again later. Damn. All right. Well, I'm glad I showed it. Oh, we got cranberries from the zombie. <laughs> Funny. You're finding a smart skeleton. This is your brainless automaton of evil, but with a brain. You get the jump on him. Finding a grave rover. This is a grave rover. He steals things from graves. Well, most of the people in the graves get the jump on him. Dead guys watch. This is plus one adventures per day when equipped. Ooh, that's pretty good. It's an accessory. Oh, we also got these three-legged pants. See how well by how goofy you look. But they're well ventilated. The extra fabric helps protect your sensitive areas, and the restroom coordination can convenience cannot be overstated or mentioned in polite company. It's no dumber than acid wash. Gives you five muscle and more HP. Did you guys watch? Yeah. All right. Let's go take a look. Let's take these off. Because th these give one muscle. But these drop two defense, but we get more muscle and more health. And that's all I love. I love all that. Um, The skull cap. More muscle and damage reduction. Yeah. Yeah, let's just... Let's just stack it all on me. Johnny Feather. Hmm. I just got more muscle. I can take this off and put on this. Sure, why not? Just keep it going. You're fighting a lick. This is a lick. A lick is the abomination that results when a powerful musician binds his life force to a body in a desperate attempt to become a moral. This one waited a little too long since his body was just a skull by the time he got around to biting it. Jump him. Nice. You're fighting a Zobmi. This is a Zobmi. He superficially resembles the Zmobi, but in, dis, is different in many subtle ways, revealed only to the discerning eye, two of which you do not possess. You get the jump on him. Nice. This ghoul, the ghoul suddenly realizes the top layer of your skin is technically dead. The ensuing hurricane of feasting is too horrible to describe. Critical hit, but we only lost one hit point because I'm overleveled. Because I forgot to talk to the why you're supposed to talk to them. Desmond gains a pound. We got a smart skull. Nice. Lech. He floats around you moaning and you yawn. Nice, nice, nice. Gual. We got gual ears. This is the ears from a gual. Pretty meaty as far as gual ears go. 
he suddenly snaps and goes from shambling to sprinting, running after you and pummeling you ferociously. Why does Moby's do that? Crit. We bonk him. See, now I'm afraid to do go any further. We got more loose teeth. Skeleton. This is a scary skeleton. I mean, it's a normal skeleton, but it's scary in that it's walking towards you, clutching its bony fists. Even though it moves in cheap stop motion, it's menacing. It gets the jump on you. It pulls its head off and throws it at you. It bounces harmlessly off of you and rolls away. The skeleton wanders off on all four, searching for it. He fumbled. You swat on the knee, doing a bunch of damage. Zot, zot, zap, kerblam, biff, pow, splat. You listen to the soothing and not at all annoying buzz of Desmond's wings as he bites your opponent, extracts five damage worth of blood from him, and injects it into you. We got a muscle point. We're so close. One out of 79. Oh, man. We're one muscle away. Ooh. Y'all can't even spell strong. In the fight, beefiness, enchantedness. You're fighting a grave rober. He steals things from graves. Mostly people in the graves. He tries to whack you with a coffin lid, but is interrupted by a coffin fit. Do we have anything that'll give us... Let's try this out. You lose five hit points, cold damage. You read the runes from the tattered scroll. Black tentacles emerge from the ground beneath him and beat him soundly for 31 damage. You shudder with cold. Maybe you shouldn't be messing with forbidden evil. Hey, we got a shovel, though. It's not better, and it's two-handed. Hopefully, it'll work because it's in our inventory, though. Let's go back here. Uh, let's say it's this. Let's say it seems like a pretty reasonable answer, but nothing happens. Damn. Gwal. Desmond gains a pound. By the way, um, your familiars, their XP, their level is listed in pounds. How many pounds they eat. So, yeah, that's that's dope. Yeah, now I'm just, I'm just going. Here we go. Found it. Big great tombstone reading, here lines Fernsworthy. And so he stays there. Now just dig up the body and get out of here. Glance around and make sure no one's watching. Get your grave robin shovel and start digging. After a while, there's a thunk as your shovel hits wood. Clear away the last of the dirt and open the coffin lid. Naturally, it makes a creepy squeak noise. Inside, you find pretty much what you'd expect. A grinning, rotting skeleton in old-fashioned wizard robes and a large iron key with a silver chain around its neck. Holding your breath, you carefully pick up the key, wincing as the skeleton's head falls off. And there's a piece of paper clutched in the skeleton's hand, and hork that as well. Then your adventurer's instinct starts kicking in, so you start poking around around the body for hidden pockets and gold fillings. Find nothing else of interest, so you close the coffin and fill in the hole. As you're leaving, you notice the smell of smoke wafting towards you from the west. Let's take a look. Scorch mark. There's a small patch of burned ground here, smelling of used up magical energy. You know that feeling you get from chewing on tinfoil? That's what it smells like. I hate that. I despise that feeling. Let's try this one more time and say boredom. You say you're, what you're pretty sure is the correct answer, and in response is a loud grinding noise. The lid of the stone coffer slowly moves aside, revealing a hidden staircase leading down to the ground. Looks like you were right. You pump your fist or do a touchdown shuffle or whatever your preferred gesture celebrating success success happens to be and you carefully climb in the stairs. The stairs proceed down for about 20 or 30 feet, bringing you to a short stone tunnel leading to another small room containing a stone coffer. Though this time it's up against the wall so there's a bit more room to move around in here. Also in this room is a ghost. As you enter, she casually hops down from where she was sitting on top of the coffer and gives you a wave. Hello, she says, whispering ghostly, but also friendly voice. Excuse me for not shaking hands, but since I'm non-corporeal, I just find the attempt kind of makes things awkward and dumb. No problem, you reply. You must be the ghost of the unknown seal clubber. In the total lack of flesh. And since you hereby, and since you saw the rebel, riddle, I hereby designate you as an official and fully-fledged seal clubber. With all the rights and privileges thereof, yada yada. Congratulations. Gee, thanks, you say. Does that mean that I can have the epic weapon? Ghost looks a bit taken aback. Wow, no, that's a whole other can of worms. How do you know about that? Head Seal Clubber at the guild sent me here to get it. Apparently I have to reforge the legendary epic weapon and defeat a nemesis I didn't know I had to reclaim a stolen artifact or something. I've actually not been given much in the way of details. Hmm. Ghost taps her chin thoughtfully. 
That's a real turn up for the books. All right. I can let you have the epic weapon. There's a second test you have to pass first. What's that, you ask? Her knuckles make distant, ghostly popping sounds as she cracks them. And you have to fight me. And I can't go easy on you, so you better bring your A-game. Uh-oh. You're fighting the unknown seal clubber. The ghost reaches into the stone coffer without bothering to open it first and pulls out the ghost of a large club. It's been a while since I had to pummel the crap out of something. Let's hope that for your sake, my skills have gotten rusty with time. Oh. You read the runes written on the tattered scroll. Fire ring portal opens up behind her, singeing her for 74 damage before closing it again. That portal must have led somewhere pretty awful. Out of nowhere, a greasy tentacle appears and slaps you in a strange, little vicious manner. You should be careful with all this evil. And we lost damage. Okay, okay, you win. I give up, the ghost says, backing away with her hands raised. Woo, here's the stuff all right. If I, like, still had muscles, I bet it'd be a different story, but you won fair and square. Epic weapon's yours. Where is it, you ask, in the coffer? No, they're just my bones and stuff. Before we get any funny adventure ideas. They're mine and you can't have them. Okay, okay. So where is it? Ghost floats over to the wall and points. There's an little tunnel behind this wall. Push this brick here. You push the brick and a section of the wall opens up, leading to a tunnel, revealing a tunnel leading to another small room. The room is dimly lit, with a few flickering candles, illuminating scenes of a seal club with a stone hammer vanquishing all sorts of enemies, but mostly seals. In the center of the room is a carved stone plinth, and in that plinth is an ancient stone hammer. Without even touching it, you can sense it's an extremely powerful artifact. Bjorn's hammer, the ghost says. Pretty good, eh? It's incredible, you say in an odd tone. Most of what you're sensing is potential, but yeah. She glances at her wrist. Okay, I got a poker game to go to. Good luck with your quest thing, right? Thanks, you say. See you around. The two of you wave, and she floats through the wall and disappears. Examines Bjorn's hammer. A combination of reverence and caution makes you hold your breath and put your hands behind you back, your back as you lean forward to minutely examine the ancient stone hammer. It's not just the all of the thing being presented with such an of being presented with such an empower, powerful and important artifact that makes you wary of disturbing it. It's the fact that you've only been through two trials to get here. If there's one thing you know as an adventurer, is that there are always three trials. Picking up one of the candles and crouching down to view the plinth at eye level, you carefully blow away some of the dust. There's what you were looking for, an almost invisible hairline crack running the, around the circumf circumference of the plinth surface, about an inch from the edge. It must be a pressure plate. If you pick up Bjorn's hammer, the difference in weight will trigger some sort of horrible trap, just like in the movie. You need to swap something for the hammer, something of almost exactly the same weight. A seal clubbing club would do the trick, you imagine. You look in your pack and pull out your seal clubbing club. Your eyes flick back and forth from it to Bjorn's hammer, trying to judge their relative weights. Close enough, you wager. Holding your breath again, you hold the club next to the hammer, just above the surface of the plinth. You carefully grasp the hammer with your other hand. Count to three. And switch. Without even waiting to see what happens, you're sprinting down the hall, and Bjorn's hammer clutched tightly in both hands. About a tenth of the second after you dive out the door, door of the tomb, there's a massive kathoom noise, and a thick cloud of dust billows out of the door after you. Talk about close. But you've successfully recovered Bjorn's hammer, and that's certainly something. Better take it back to your guild. Maybe they'll tell you what's going on with this whole nemesis deal. We got Bjorn's hammer. It's five to ten, one-handed, more muscle, compared to five to ten and spell damage. We don't use fucking spells. We are not cowards. We use hammers. This is a hammer modeled after the weapon of Bjorn, the most legendary of seal clubbers. Seals flee in terror before the wielder of this fearsome weapon, and it gives us plus ten because we're seal clubbers. Let's take it off. Right. Yep, gives us plus 10 because we're seal clubbers. I don't know if it does that all the time, but yep. There we go. We've got it now, boys. 
Let's go show it off. Gunther. All right. You were the guy. Ah, well done, Grigner says upon seeing you holding the epic weapon. The hammer of the ancient hero Bjorn shall smite our enemies once again. Once we return it to its full strength, that is. And how do we, and by which I'm pretty sure you mean I, do that, you ask? We, indeed you, need to recover a bottle of ancient seal blood distilled from the forefathers of the monsters that plague our clans. The last known bottle was stolen by the evil clown lord Beelzebozo. Clown lord. You want me to fight a clown lord? I recognize the fear in your voice, Dusky Alfred, and yes, Beelzebozo is undoubtedly the most unholiest of creatures you've ever faced. But I have confidence in your skills, and if you were to restore the legendary epic weapon to its true glory, and recover a stolen artifact from your nemesis, you must as well. Beelzebozo's lair is underneath an ancient monolith in the nearby plains, known as the, quotation mark, fun, close quotation mark, house. May fortune smile upon you in your quest. Let's talk to Torg. Damn. Hmm. All right. Well, main map. Nearby. Never mind. Nearby plains. Oh, that's... I don't like that. That clown will suck your dick for a dollar. Where's the forest? Distant woods, right? Poop forest, find a bar. Look at that! Mm. Hell yeah. Uh, deep fat fires, right? Dark neck of the woods. You're fighting the P imp. This imp is styling. He advances towards you, tossing his cane from hand to hand. You have to jump on him. You viciously bludgeon him, dealing a bunch of damage. Damn. You're fighting a we imp. This is one of the imps of Hades. He's not particularly tough. In fact, he's not even particularly effectual. Get a jump on him. Smack. Ooh, wow. Crit hit. Four hit points. Hell yeah. How do we do it? Quaint and curious volume. You stumble into a clearing. Really, you really should watch where you're stepping and see one of the deep fat fires reading a most peculiar book. It appears to be bound in human flesh and has a screaming face on the cover. I mean, an actual, literal, screaming face, not a picture of a face that looks like it's screaming. What you got there, you ask? It's an ancient volume of imp lore, the friar says. Ah! The book says. Stop reading that, I implore you. That's gotta be dangerous, and I need someone to help me find the missing artifact anyway. Ah! The book says. Don't worry, the friar says, rolling his eyes. Can't suck me into Hades unless I forget to keep absolutely focused on the book at all times and not get involved in pointless conversation. Ah! The fire disappears from the book, leaving his wallet behind. You quickly change your name to Victor, and to Victor go the spoils. Then you change your name back, and continue the search. You find a Hellion. Oh boy. It's go time. Lunch smack. <gasps> <laughs> now that's true power. This thing that was almost practically a mini-boss to me now is just a normal enemy. Strike one. See a bunch of imp tracks all leading in the same direction. You follow them and find a massive crowd of imps. They're waving signs with slogans like, Hades is for imps, equal pay for equal torture, and Hades, no, we won't go. What's going on, you guys? A nearby imp puts down his sign and walks over. Going on strike, he says. Tired of being treated like second-class demons just because it was small. We're striking until Satan gives in to our terms. Aren't you worried he'll crush you like bugs, you say? Nah, the imp replies. Not as long as we stick together. As long as we have impunity, there's no way... <laughs> impunity. There's no way we can be punished. Besides, we just found an artifact that the fire stole from us ages ago. As long as we have this artifact safely tucked away in a clearing in the middle of the dark neck, we're unstoppable. Here, wear this to show your solidarity with the struggle. You take the imp and head off to find where they've hidden the fire's artifact. You find impunity ring. Cool. Oh, that feels so good. Actually, let's take a look. Impunity ring. Five hot damage and more damage to hot spells. That's not bad. Um, 
I don't really care about going first, so I'll take those off and I'll put these on. I don't know why I kept the loafers on. I think it's just because they were newer. Wow. I got a bunch. Dope powers. Dark Neck of the Woods. Bonk. <laughs> oh, that's good. Bonk. <laughs> P.M. He says something about you having his meat and slaps you in the throat. You lose 18 hit points. Bip. Win the fight. Hell yeah. All of my love to you, oh. You follow your nose towards the smell of brimstone, but instead find a grove of olive trees. We find something that clearly used to be a grove of olive trees, but has recently been put to the torch by some dastardly demons. You manage to scavenge a couple that mostly escape with their pimentos intact. We get two olives. We can probably make some stuff with that now, can't we? Oh, Lord. I don't know any of these. I mean, I could just go off camera and just make a whole bunch of stuff. You know, excruciatingly go through and, yeah, vodka and cranberry. Yeah. This is a drink that made with vodka and cranberry juice. Rubbing alcohol and chalk. Two great tastes that taste great together. Um, Lemons? Damn. I've got so many. Olives. Vodka martini. Nice. This is your basic vodka martini. Vodka and an olive. Cool. Hmm. Can I mix a cola and a vodka? No, wait. Bottle of vodka. Damn. A different one? No. Grapefruit? That makes Greyhound, though, you fool. Cherries. I already tried that. Bloody Mary, of course. I'm an idiot. This delicious. This is a delicious Bloody Mary. Not as spicy as it could be, but it's still part of a complete breakfast. Nice. Gwol egg? No. I just want to get all these out of my inventory, you know? You know, I've wasted enough time here. I'm actually just going to Google all the recipes and then I'm just going to mush stuff into stuff. Um, so I'll be back when I've done that. If you see that my adventures have gone down, it's because I decided to grind off screen for more cash. Uh, but I'll be right back. BRB. Hey, I'm back for a second. I uh, Googled and I found out what you're supposed to do. You shake up the snake milk just in case it's all separated and weird. When you open the carton, you realize that you've inadvertently turned it into cream cheese. burn this just because all right and then we craft creme cheese nope we cook creme cheese and bagels acceptable bagels nice the plain bagel with cream cheese is one of nature's greatest mysteries. Why is it so adequate? How can two things that barely taste like anything combine to make something that tastes fine? Um, cool. So that appears to be the only source of... Yeah, carton of snake milk. It comes from a sewer snake with a sewer snake in it. The acceptable bagel is one of the is the only use for the plain bagel. Now these guys only drop these. Oh boy. All right. I guess I'll be doing that. Okay. I'll also look and see what the other things that I can do are. But uh, time to just go hand in hand. Oh, cool. Booze map. Whoa. Nice. We do too much damage. Anyway, um, nope, wrong one. Yeah, I'll stop recording here and then uh, I'll come back after I've 
done something substantial. See you guys then. And hey, we're back. So I'm going to try to remember everything I did because I did a lot of stuff. Um, I didn't grind too, too much. But I have this pregnant mushroom now. This is a mushroom that's been fertilized with some fairy gravy. It's a fecund fungus, a tumescent tool still, toadstool. Hatches into a baby gravy fairy. As you put the mushroom in your baby gra- in your familiar grow terrarium, as soon as it touches the fertile soil, it hatches into a baby gravy fairy. You name her Tronica. Okay, so we got that. Um, damn. Um, I didn't get anything else new here, but I did grind this up. I think, yeah. Bombastic bag, man. Um. I turned my bread items into these. I already had the loafers and I think I sold the wand, but yeah, that was, uh, that was that. Um, I made a bunch of acceptable bagels to do that. You have to go find and did I talk about this? I can't remember if I talked about this or not. Anyway. Yeah. I made a bunch of popsicles. I got, I have much less plain bagels now, but only because I have so many regular uh, acceptable bagels and then got a whole bunch of these made some some of these some of these oh i didn't look up what i can do with this hmm. uh it's probably fine anyway um yeah um i'm going to go back to deep fat fryers this isn't it hey you know let's go to the bat hole let's go to the we're finding a pine bat this is a bat with the body like one of those little air fresheners you know the kind where it's like a sponge in a can but not the kind where it's a sponge in a can but the kind that's a little pine tree that hangs in the mirror you can get it we beat the hell out of it actually wait let's find out what that thing does One town increases item drops. Okay, cool. That's not bad at all. By the way, I also got uh, the I got smack. Bought a regular old bat. This is a perfectly ordinary bat. Cool. Albino bat, equally as likely to carry disease, get in your hair, or suck your blood, but this one's easier to see. Albino bat. Ordinary bat, pine bat. I think those are the three. Yeah. Bat gut. I wonder where you're at. You look up and see a twinkling light fluttering around the roof of the cave. As your eyes adjust, you see it's a bat carrying a tea tray. What a bat's doing with the tea tray and how it's flying and carrying it at the same time, you're not sure. Well, obviously it uses its feet to carry it. Duh, idiot. Looks like the bat's not too sure either as it drops the tea tray. Bounce off your head with a sonorous clang. It disappears into the guano, but see a few biscuits left over from whatever bizarre tea party they were having. Lucky you. Your ten-leaf clover, clover disappears in a puff of smoke. It was five hit points. Uh, the ten-leaf clover is an item that we picked up. I mean, I don't have it anymore, actually. But basically, it causes um, fun random encounters to happen. Briefcase bat. Anyway, sorry. Um, it causes random encounters to happen, but they consume the clover. This is a bat with the body of a briefcase. At least it's somewhat smaller than the boxer case bats. Get the jump on it. Oh, we drop it. It opens its briefcase body and releases a beam of golden light, but he dodged the beam. That's probably a reference to Pulp Fiction. Or maybe Devil May Cry 4. We got a briefcase and bat guano. Cool. Can we... Guess it wouldn't be in here, would it? Bat gut. Gut of a bat. That's why they call it bat gut. If it was the gut from something else, they call it a something else gut. Riff Kess. I wonder what's inside. 300 meat. Dope. Bat guano. It's going off from the bat. They say in some cultures they make pottery out of this stuff. That sounds pretty nasty to me. We have a guano coffee cup. What does that do for me? It's a coffee cup made out of bat guano. What's coffee? 
You raised the question, dog. Let me just close my tabs. So an honor biscuit. Freaks bats out. That's funny. Okay. Yeah, all right. Sometimes I kind of wish that this game didn't require so, so much grinding, but like, it's free. You know? Baseball bat. This is a bat with the body of a baseball and the heart of a bad pun. Jump it. Cool. We do it. A perpendicular bat. This bat's perpendicular to the ground. That makes it totally different from a regular bat. We jump it. Baseball bat. Briefcase bat. I think that's all of them then. How do we unblock the passageways? Hmm. Actually, you know what? I can probably go back to council. Still bugging us. All right. Recently, an aura of extreme spookiness has begun to emanate from the curpt near the misspelled cemetery. We fear a horrible monster has taken up residence there and begun to rile up the local undead. Can you investigate? This should help. Oh, by the way, I leveled up to level seven. I think they give you a quest every level. This is a top of the line Spengler brand evilometer. Tells you where evil is. The council has helpfully calibrated it, so it only works in the crypt. Cool. Can I get anything here? I can. Cool. So now I can reliably kill dudes, even though I don't know if I'll actually need to. Yeah, I don't know what I should do next. Because I'm running out of adventures. Not in like a big, big way. Yeah, I'll come back for that later. Hmm. Man, look at all these things. Damn. Get rid of the evil and the curped. Yeah, let's do that. We got the defiled nook, defiled niche, defiled cranny, and defiled alcove. And a table in the middle. You're fi oh, I don't like that. You're fighting a toothy skeleton. Skeleton. Yeah. Skeleton. Ooh. This is a skeleton that has a lot more teeth than most other skeletons, even the ones that practice good dental hygiene before they became skeletons. Bip. Ooh. Deal a paltry three damage. This opponent might be a little out of your league. It jumps up and bites you real quick, like the movie where that shark bites Samuel L. Jackson. That was awesome. Ouch, oof, ow, 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 ow ugh. That's, uh, that's not great. Let's burn it. You let an entire gallon of fury bubble to the surface and draw back your arm for a raging attack. You hit it for 22 plus 10 plus 16 damage. Critical hit, sucko, whack, smack, boink, whammo. Your evilometer emits a single beep. The air in this part of the crypt smells slightly less evil. If you guys didn't notice before, the evilometer went down from 200 to... It was at 200 and went down to 199. Uh-oh. A spiny skeleton. This is a skeleton covered in a thick layer of bony spikes. Or maybe they're spiky bones and you're not sure. Jeez. Okay, I'm not going to do that every time, but bam. Okay. Your evilometer emits a single beep. The air in this part of the crypt smells slightly less evil. Get another Ooh, bone. Party skeleton. Skeleton holding onto the life skeleton that turned it onto a skeleton and turned it into a skeleton in the first place. Blonk him. Skeleton fits, lets out a festive whoop, which your non-undead ears perceive as a mournful wail. I could probably keep going, right? Yeah. Can I actually... I think I saw something like this. Craft stuff. Items. Smart skull skeleton bone. Damn. Loose teeth skeleton bone? Skeleton key. What does that do me? Yeah, I'm just going to Google. I'm still recording, right? Yeah, okay. I'm going to Google. Skeleton key. It unlocks doors in the daily dungeon. You have to use it at the naughty, skele naughty sorceress. Okay, cool. 
And you can also use it for an innuendo, whatever that means. Sells for 69. Huh. Okay. Whatever. Um, I guess let's keep going then. Bam. Oh. Right. I'll just have a few of those ready just in case I gotta go. Oh. Loose teeth. Okay. Now I'm hoping that this... Oh. Shoot. Dang. That's, uh, that's not good. It's not good. Well, we could go to distant woods and regenerate our health. Oh, damn. Spooky forest? All right. Cool. Cool. Oh, we're running out of adventures like hella. Man, this is something of an anticlimactic way to end this. Let's follow the old road, actually. You manage to catch your breath of ways into the forest without running into any of those spooky monsters. With a sigh of relief, you manage to catch your breath and look around, trying to figure out what to do with this newfound freedom. Interest is peak because you notice an old, overgrown road. We already did this thing, but let's go the old road. You wander up the road, figuring that if life is a highway, you might as well ride it all night long. Past an old set of wagon ruts deeper into the forest, just past a cobblestone path leading to a run-down looking cottage. As you're trying to decide which of those things to investigate, you hear a whistling behind you. you. Turn around to see a hunter in a tree off the road. I'm going to talk to him. Walk over to the hunter's tree stand. Howdy, adventurer, quite, he says quite amicably as you approach. Seen any bar around here? I'm hunting them, you see. I haven't, but now that you mentioned I could use a drink. Hunter looks at you quizzically. Anyway, I collect their skins. Useful as all get out of our skin is. Finally, I'll gladly take them off your hands. I pay top sirloin, too. Let's call it 75 meat apiece. This here tree stand also troubles as a tree stand, so if you're interested in buying any trees, let me know. I've got hundreds of them. It's like they literally grow on trees. I don't know what that does, but I am going to sell him all of these because I don't really care. Yeah. I'm just going to double check. This game's old and a little backwards. Um, this is how I play, but mostly because I'm a bad person. Cool people would just do it all on their own. Tree is last stand. Tree is last stand. All right. Spooky sapling. What does a spooky sapling do? Oh, okay. Buy a tree for 100 meat. The hunter's eyes light up as he takes your meat. Boy, howdy, you won't regret this here purchase, he says as he hands you an adorable little sapling. Spend 100 meat, get a spooky sap. You wave to the hunter and wander off. Let's see if that does anything. No, damn. Oh my god, I forgot that there's a second floor to the Lady Spooky Raven's quest. Oh, jeez. Huh. I totally forgot. Hey, why don't we just pick up here? We got Bart Ender. Howdy, adventurer, says the jovial man behind the bar. I'm Bart. Bart Ender. Nice to meet you, Bart. I'm Dusky Alfred, you say. Council says you need some help with something. Yep. Got a bit of a rat problem, you see. Wholesale is thick with them. I mean, there are always rats down there. Rats are a crucial part of the fantasy tavern ecosystem. Problem is that there are too many rats. I need to figure out why there's so many of them and put a stop to them. Somehow. So there are rats in the cell of the tavern. I have to kill, like, what, ten? Ten of them? This isn't a simple matter to kill ten rats, buddy. You need to trace them back to their source and put a stop to whatever it is. Let me unlock the trap door for you. Be careful. It's dark down there. Let's talk to a suspicious-looking guy. Hey, man, uh, you want to take some goofballs? First ball's free, man. Let's take them. Here you go, man. If you don't get caught, you can get these from me, man. They go up to a thousand. Hey, man, uh, you um, want to buy some goofballs? Only 100 meat, man. Pool table. 
Oh man. No playing for fun. <laughs> Smash Brothers be like Let's play pool against her for one. Moonbeam squints at you curiously as you place your bet on the side of the side rail. Wow, man, she says. Your aura is really amazing. Like, every time you move, there's these strands of light coming off you. It's totally amazing, man. Moonbeam lets you break, but you don't sink anything. She leans over the table and sends the cue ball flying past all the balls onto an empty rail. Then she starts to line up another shot. Uh, I think it's my turn. I sunk the ultraviolet ball, Moonbeam says, pointing at the empty pocket. Uh, there's no ultraviolet ball. Oh, huh. Far out, she says, stepping back from the table. Even though Moonbeam manages to sink the infrared, octarine, and paisley balls, you still win by sinking all your regular balls and the eight ball. Moonbeam hangs her debt, and you leave her staring at the light trails so she insists are coming from her fingertips. Um, okay, let's wager two. Is it the same? Is this a source of infinite meat? You don't have time to... It takes an adventure. Damn. That was dumb of me. <laughs> oh, I'm a fool. I didn't even notice. All right. Well, we can look at the tavern cellar. Yep. It looks like this. Oh, my God. I'm so stupid. All right. Well, let's just take some drugs. Cool. We took some drugs, everyone. Let me see where that where those goofballs be. Bottle of goofballs. Oh, it gives you a thing for something tells me it'd be a bad idea if you to take these. Dang, I'm such a fool. <laughs> I totally didn't notice. Of course it would take me. Why wouldn't it? Oh, that was stupid of me. Did it say that anywhere? Or am I just an idiot? Typical tavern, pool table. Yep. Parentheses, one close parentheses. Dumbass. Oh, man. I wonder if it affects your score. Or like if um the pool playing score from this thing, from this. Dang. All right. Well, all right. For a recap. Oh, that reminds me. We actually got a message from Lady Spooky Raven. Dearest Dusty Alfred, I'm only, I'm almost ready to leave this world. But I'd really like to go dancing one last time and I need your help. Please come see me on the second floor of my manor. So I actually only got this later and I forgot that I just didn't show you guys. Um, But, you know, I did. So... I wonder if there's a journal for quests that we've done. Oh, we're a narwhal pummeler now. Hell yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I forgot what we did this episode, but we unlocked a bunch of stuff. We finally, finally talked to the last guys. Actually, since I just, I recorded this and episode six in a, in a block. Um, I say because it's a little obvious that I did so. But uh, let's just recap and see where we are right now. We are currently exploring the cellar of the typical tavern. We're looking for the boss bat in the bat hole in the nearby plains. We are finding the ritual items. I don't know. Did we find one? We might have, because the ring, I don't know if that's a ritual item. Um, we're finding some way to infiltrate the throne room of Cobb's Knob and defeat the Goblin King. We got the quest from Dakota Fanning that we will then do. We can go do Lady Spooky Raven's quest. And then we're looking to get rid of evil in the crypt. Curped, rather. Excuse me. And then we are going to go through the fun house and find Beasle Bozo. Right. The whole thing's an adventure. Damn it. Oh, I'm so stupid. I pissed away 10 adventures for, like, what? 10 meat? I got nothing from that. Oh my god. Mm. Mm. 
I'm kicking my own ass, everyone. Mostly potions. Yeah, let's just keep the episode going. Let's just milk it, you know? Goofball. Goofballs. Bottle of goofballs. If you take it, you give hopped up on goofballs. And then you get goofball withdrawal. Cool. For the first six, from the seventh bottle onward, you lose stuff from your stats. Takes away the effect goofball withdrawal. Cool. So how does goofball withdrawal work? Body's freaking out because you want more goofballs. Huh. Automatically at rollover. It lasts for 30 adventures. That isn't so, so bad. I suppose I'll take it if I've got to go through a tough area and then I can go back down to a weaker one. Or maybe for once I could have a character in an RPG that I play who is not constantly high all the time. But yeah, um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven quests, I think. Which isn't so, so bad. Um, all right, well, that's the long and short of it. That's been Kingdom of Loathing. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for putting up with me, an actual idiot. And uh, thanks for watching. Remember, Kingdom of Loathing is totally free. My issues with it are just because it's an RPG and so it has a bunch of mysteries and stuff. Like, I don't think that all the hidden things are bad and I do like using wikis. I did the same thing for Dark Souls and it didn't, like, ruin me for Dark Souls. Because how are you supposed to figure out how to get all three third chords, you know? How are you supposed to know how to upgrade a weapon in Dark Souls 1? Or Demon's Souls, for that matter. Wikis and RPGs are a synonymous thing to me. Mostly because I'm a coward. But, um... I digress. I'm having a lot of fun with this game. And I need I remind everyone, this game's totally free. Reckoning at Gun Manor is not free, but it's cheap. Reckoning at Gun Manor, excuse me. West of Loathing and its DLC. Like, how much is this? Yeah, 11 bucks. It's cheap. This game's This game kicks ass. This game is so good. This game is good. And I only just found out about this probably because it came out on my birthday. But it's West of Loathing Engine and it's a roguelike. And that's very interesting to me for obvious reasons. Assuming that the series where I play, ro where I play roguelikes has come out. But um, that's this episode of Kingdom of Loathing. I'll see you guys next time. It'll, I'll probably be very rusty when I come back because I'm going to have to build up a bunch of adventures so I don't do this again. Uh, but thanks for watching. Thanks for coming by. Play this game. I implore you all. Please. It's great. This game kicks ass. So much content and it's free. Hell yeah. All right. Bye. Take care of yourself. I didn't click it. Ending video sucks, everyone. All right. Bye for real.